All right. Back to streaming some Final Fantasy. This time, decided instead of Essagos or Elagos or Elagos, went in the right direction. I'm gonna go with Emagos. L large. S small. M medium. So, welcome, my Reaper. Uh, Emigos. Emigos Windroar. He will be our protagonist for this journey through Ed Walker. This will be my second, although I did start a little on Emigos, but we're doing two Emigos. Alright. Here we are back at the uh, Waking Sands. Or no. Falling stones? I like that. Rising stones. That's it. Back to Alpha down here. Actually, let's say hi to everybody else first. Back to Orianje. Much and more have we discovered that the Telothroi's machinations since Selengred and I did return from Garlemald. Verily, their troops doth appear to have been tempered in much the same manner as those engaged in the construction of the towering edifice in the capital. When Arnavald tried to free the emolgia held in the tower, it triggered some sort of alarm, and the captives were killed instantly. As such, we have no choice but to leave them in the clutches of the Telophori until the means of rescuing them have been found. Might we end up figuring that out as part of this? We will find out. In the meantime, the, the summonings of the Lunar Primals will continue. Just as we must rely on the Grand Company of Eorzea to put down such entities and prevent any further abductions, so too do they rely on us to come through with our investigation. I'm feeling... I have a feeling the journey to Charlian is going to be quite the test of your nerves in many more ways than one. You'll miss this place while we're away. while you're away. I just know it. But for now, the best thing we can do is get plenty of rest while we wait to hear from Kryle. Do we have any more? Oh, you're stolen. Alize. Those who have who are brought within close proximity of the towers are tempered into serving Garlemald and forced to summon lunar primals with ether drawn from land. But even having understood this, we have yet to uncover what the Telophory wish to achieve by all this. Are the towers purely for strategic advantage, or do they serve some other purpose? Whatever it is my father in the form are hiding, I am determined to get to the bottom of it. Uh -huh. Not only do the members of the Forum intend to adhere to their long-standing policy of in non-intervention, they made a point of sending Masha Fortuno or herself Fortuno here to explicitly state that fact. Rather than simply refusing to involve themselves in our affairs, it would appear they have actively tried to prevent us from meddling in theirs. That does, of course, make Kryle's mission of securing our entry into Sharia nigh on impossible. But I am confident that she will find a way regardless. After the end of the Dragonsong War, I spent many a moon roaming. Kugane, Radzatan, even Garlemald, but never Charlie. In all honesty, a nation populated entirely by bookish types like Alphado is not a place that appeals to me. Oh, come on, Estinian. You have a thing for the little guy. Oh, no, I was feeling the need to take stock. Emikos, do you have some time to talk? Yeah, sure. I would like to gather everyone in Don's respite and together assess a situation in which we find ourselves.
Let's just stay stock of the fact, shall we? The crisis at hand began with the sudden appearance of ominous towers in a multiple of locations throughout the world. Let me turn the volume down a little bit. Oh, it's on auto events. Let me stop. Blah, blah, blah. The tel Telophora's stated purpose is to recreate the final days of Via's past, an apocalyptic event that would result in the destruction of all we hold dear. Already there are towers of theirs have been the cause of untold suffering. Countless in innocents that kidnapped and imprisoned their, their faith perverted for primal summonings. And unless we find a way to deal with the corruptive aura surrounding the fires, we can't even get close enough to rescue anyone. Those shielded with the blessing of light seem able to resist it, being tempered at least. But after what happened to Arnvold and Fordola, we need to be very, very careful about how we proceed. Yet yeah, while those threats close to home are a paramount concern, we mustn't lose sight of the situation in Garland. As you know, the Telophoroi are under the leadership of Van Daniel and one other delightful fellow, Zenos Ye Galvis, the crown prince and our dear, our dear friend. Today he has reclaimed his old body, murdered Emperor Varus, and plunged Garland to an even deeper pit of chaos. The capital has probably seen the worst of it for good while there. I saw the bloodiest fighting in the War of Succession, but that was since changed and in troubling ways. Aye. During our reconnaissance, the air was not once rent by the barking of cannons or the cries of discord. It was an eerie fog of silence which did blanket that ruined city. The inhabitants appeared to have been tempered, and with nary a word spoken did they labor to transform the palace into a soaring edifice born of nightmares. If they are indeed made thralls, it seems safe to assume that these events too are orchestrated by the Telophroi. An army of primals is awful enough, but in light of recent developments, I fear it's only the prelude to even greater catastrophe. We need to devise a means to counter this threat, and quickly, before our allies are overwhelmed. We'll find a way in Charlian. I'm sure of it. Master Foshiro's comments regarding the final days are curious to say the least. The forum's note knows more than it is letting on. Sorry to interrupt. We just received word from Mistress Cryle. She says that arrangements for your visit have been finalized. You're to head to Limsa and board the next ship bound for Charlian. When on arrival, present yourself as associates of the students of Baldessian. Come to assist with the Order's restoration. The arrangements may be settled, but what of your thoughts? They must race the prospect of returning home after so long. I am eager to see it, of course. Of course, um, we should set off at once. Then I'll accompany you to the docks. You need at least one person there to wave and cry and wish you a safe journey. I'm going to turn up the volume here, because pretty soon we've got voice acting. Time to go to Lipsa Lipsa. Hmm. 
do the Ethernet. We can go way down here. I like being able to use the map to point us out. I never thought the day would come when I would be sailing home again. It always seems so very far away. Sea travel can be tedious, but I don't mind. It is a rare experience for most Dutch guardians. I sh shudder to think what manner of truth awaiteth us to, uh, beyond the indigo deep. Still more do I dread the pr prospect of discussions long overdue. Contrary to what you might think, this is this will be like going home for me as well. I may have learned how to survive in Minza, but it was in Charlien where I was taught quite relentlessly, I might add, the skills to properly live. I might have lived in Master Matoya's cave for a good part of my life, but even for me the thought of returning to Charlien is quite exciting. I can hardly imagine how it is for the others who lived most of their lives there. Though a part of me looks for forward to returning home, I'm not I've not forgotten that my father stripped us of the privileges of our family name. I hope it doesn't cause trouble for the officials upon our arrival. What a grim reason to bring you to Charlien. Not much to be done about it, I suppose, but I would have liked to give you the grand tour under happier circumstances. Everyone's here. Yeah, which is good, because I've already paid for your passage and the fee is non-refundable. The ship for Charlien should be pulling into port soon, so please follow me and have all your luggage close at hand. finish loading our cargo. We should be ready to depart right on schedule, or so I'm told. Excellent. Tis nice to have a smooth beginning to one's journey, at the very least. It's funny. Master Louis Soir came here on a ship very much like this one. And now, years later, the street urchin he befriended that day is bound for his mentor's homeland. With his mentor's grandchildren, no less. Aye. Tis upon reflection that every twist of time's river and fate's whims are brought into sharp relief. Thou hast matured much in the intervening years. Wert thou not caught attempting to relieve Master Louisois of his purse scant moments after he made landfall upon this dock? Oh, really? Now that's a tale I'd like to hear. Will this be your first visit to Charlian, Sir Estinian? Sir Estinian? <sighs> Are we strangers newly met? Why this stiff formality? I, uh, merely meant it as a professional courtesy, since we are now colleagues in an official sense. I'd rather you dispense with the sirs, especially in private company. Or I'll be forced to respond in kind, little Lord Alphano. You've made your point, Estinian. Painfully well. <laughs> <laughs> Better.
Are you all right, Tataru? You seem positively distraught. Distraught? Me? Don't be silly. I think it's lovely that they get to see their homeland. It's just... We're trying to thwart the schemes of an army hell-bent on destroying the world. And, once again, I have to stay behind and worry that this is the last time I'll get to see my friends. We'll bring him back safe and sound, I promise. We'll bring him back safe and sound, I promise. Yes. I'll hold you to that. Give, give Imigos a voice. Ah, good. You're still here. Hori! Coltine! What brings you all this way? We're to assist the Maelstrom and the Cobbles with a Lunar Primal operation, so we thought we'd see you off before heading to the tower. Flamine and the others wish you all a safe journey, and promise that they'll look after things here until you return. We will too, of course. Aye, we your fellow Scions of the Seventh Dawn will do our part to ensure the end of the world won't happen on our watch. We set the sail. All aboard for Charlian! At least I now know how to pronounce uh, uh, Coltonet's name. I think I always called it Coltonet or something like that. It's time. Then we must delay no longer. We will contact you the moment we learn aught of value. Wish us luck. Have a safe journey, and please, please, be careful. And so you venture forth unto the unknown. A fate beyond the horizon that cannot be divined. A future undefined and in flux. In uncertain times, naught but the simplest words of wisdom will suffice. That which lives is destined to die. Love leads to loss. Every beginning has an end. Treasure every moment, every step of your descent. There, in the depths where souls and stars rest, find your truth. Jeez, Emmett. We are... Uh, uh... Foreboding? That's it. Oh, come on. This is a version of the music that's in the... Uh, yeah. The, uh, Feel. End of 1.0 trailer thingy. Thing. Thing.
The day has barely dawned, my fellow early riser. Though we're hardly alone in that. Envious of those still sleeping soundly, no doubt. Called out to you, you say? Hmm. I've heard nothing myself. In any case, I dare say the sea air will do you good. Why not join the others on deck? Charlian should be coming into view at any moment. The Charlene isn't that far away from me, or is he? Day's journey. Maybe less? A little less? My voice yet reaches you. I am glad. Hear. Feel. Think. And thus do we meet face to face at last. My warrior of light, guided by the crystal. Hello, Hyolin. I don't think he has trust issues. I know I don't. I know I don't. After you sojourn in the first, I believe you have your answer. You have gained an understanding of what I truly am, what Eidolon has always been, a primal. Zodiac was created to forestall the apocalypse which threatened the ancient world, and I was brought forth to bind him. Yet seven times now, those who would orchestrate a return to that bygone era have rejoined a shard to the god I had sundered. The greater his strength grows, the swifter does mine own diminish. The power to draw your mind into the rift betwixt is no longer mine to wield. Yet though it taxes me sorely, I dare not leave these words unsaid. Even bereft of my guidance, you and your companions have accepted the burden of this star's troubled past. A conjunction has begun to form, an intertwining of your time and mine. Wheels shudder and turn. Conflict looms. Monumental. Which will decide the fate of this world and all life upon it. When you truly understand what is at stake, and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable, then shall I honor the promise made in another time, another age. Cast your peepers to the fore, folks. Charlians, just over yonder. I will not keep you further. 
Your traveler's heart must yearn to behold this unfamiliar land. We shall meet again, and soon. What a fine morning! Oh, oh, still a bit stiff though. And a good morning to you too. Taking a look at the island already? Then let's go! Let's go! Might still be room in the prow if we're lucky. Ah, the sleepers have arisen. <sighs> there she is. <laughs> Good old Charlian. Oh, I see it. Home. Home at last. Well... Maybe not in father's eyes, but we'll manage on our own, if we must. You do know you're not alone in this, don't you? Indeed, it is as Sir Estinian said. Forget not the comrades who boarded this ship at your side, I prithee. Thank you, my friends. We are ever grateful for your steadfast support. Upon arrival, we will be disembarking into the heart of Charlian proper. There is no greater concentration of wisdom in all the world. I am confident that somewhere within that center of knowledge and learning, we will find the answers we seek. Charlian, the solitary island nation of the Northern Seas. Where under the watchful gaze of Thaliac, patron deity of scholars, academics hoard all manner of knowledge and secrets. Once, they deigned to accept foreign students into a distant colony maintained in the Dravanian hinterlands. How swiftly they abandoned it once the first Garlean boots set hostile foot on Alamegan soil. So averse to the prosecution of war, these men of wisdom, your would-be allies. I thought they'd never let us off the ship. What's next then? Entry applications? Hopefully they find no cause to deny us. Hasn't Charlie and Orbit severed relations with foreign powers? Those of us without direct ties, myself included, may be refused outright. 
It is true that, as a nation, Charlian only forms trade agreements with a select few neutral countries. But from a practical standpoint, an island cannot afford to be overly strict with its borders. Especially not if that island's people are wholly devoted to the accumulation of knowledge. If one submits the proper paperwork, with satisfactory evidence of identity and intent, then foreigners may be granted entry. May. Quite. So let us be absolutely clear on these points before we proceed. The immigration officer will ask for your affiliation and your purpose of visit. Considering Charlian's views on intervention, I strongly suggest we avoid any mention of the Scions. Kral has laid the groundwork for us to act as associates of the students of Baldessian, and our ostensible reason for being here is to aid in their order's restoration. Grahatia, it might expedite our progress should an actual student be seen at the head of our little group. Would you mind leading the way? Of course. The immigration officers were this way, as I recall. Shall we? Greetings. We've just arrived and are eager to make our way into the city. Would you be so kind as to process our entry applications? Certainly. I see by your mark you are an Archon. I am. Grahat here of the students of Baldassian at your service. I was assigned to an Aeorsian survey team, but have returned to assist with the reformation of my order. My associates here will provide additional support. Very good. I have paperwork detailing your group and its scheduled arrival for today. And it seems some few of your companions are also Archons. If you'll step forward, we can process those applications first. Ishtola rule. See how it glows. That list is etherically linked with a citizen registry kept in the main repository. I've confirmed your status as Archons and amended your travel records accordingly. Welcome home. Now, who do we have here? Alphano Leveilleur. And Alizé Leveilleur. Your applications have also been approved. Having said that... The streets are abuzz with talk of how House Leveilleur's lord disowned his young progeny. While such personal circumstances constitute no reason to deny you entry, I urge you to avoid exacerbating your present situation. Times are quite troubled enough already. We shall keep that in mind. These last two are not Charlian natives, but you will find their credentials are in order. An application was made in advance. Hmm. 
Name and occupation? Uh, what is him, Uh, he is no more adventurer by trade. I have not selected this option. I have no idea how this goes. An adventurer? Well, I suppose that is considered a valid calling in your native Eorzea. And it does indeed match the profile provided. You may enter. And you, sir? Estinian Valino, formerly of the Order of the Knights Dragoon in Ishgard. Formally, at least. And what, pray tell, is your profession now? Uh. <laughs> uh. Hey, I started my journey as an adventurer <laughs> before I joined the Scion, so that was all the truth. This one? If you'll allow me! Trial. My associate is a mercenary, hired for his strength at arms. Surely you are aware of the dangers we often face on our forays into the wilderness. Mistress Baldessian, if you insist on sponsoring his entry, then so be it. But while I appreciate that desperate times call for desperate measures, I find your choice of company concerning. Be advised that even a single misstep may have severe repercussions for your organization. I have every confidence in my chosen company, dear and trusted comrades that they are. But I thank you for your concern. It is good to see you. Likewise. Long voyage notwithstanding, you will seem none the worse for wear. There is much to discuss, but this is hardly the place. Let's be on our way, shall we? Oh! <laughs> Welcome, friends, to Charlian. As your mercenary, I should hope my welcome includes a generous salary. Well, <laughs> I had to say something, Sir Taciturn. One thing I do want to point out, which I'm not sure if anybody noticed, uh, to crowds referred to as Mr. Spaldesian. Yes, as in the students of Baldessian. It's partially explained a little later, but she is the granddaughter of the founder, Galoff, uh, Baldessian. So that's her connection. And so she's essentially, at this point in time, about the head of the students. I just covered the chat box. And it, I just realized that I didn't have it completely covered in this character, so. Go. I can probably turn this down now. No one turned down too much, but. I am unaccustomed to fabricated lies on demand. Why should, should it matter how I'd earn my living? Here we are at last, the great city of Charlene. You may have noticed some similarities to the Crystarium, yes? In fact, I 
Oh, but we really should let Kryle have a say first. We continue this conversation another time. I'm not sure if we ever do. That was about as awkward as expected. Still, we're here now, and that's all that matters. I'm fine, honestly. Better be waved through with a stern warning than be denied entry at F after all. Even alone, the years I spent in the first passing here in the blink of an eye, the city feels untouched by time. Allow me to extend upon thee my warmest welcome, Amigos. May the wisdom of my homeland aid in our endeavors. You are doubtless eager to take in the sights. Not to worry, Amigos. The city is not like to vanish before we finish our discussion. I'm glad I spotted your ship coming into port. The officers are born bureaucrats and sticklers for details. In any case, you may relax and take a moment to get your land legs back. Nope. Oh. Not going too fast on us. I thought to launch directly into explanation of what I've learned and how we might proceed. But this is Emigos and Estinians, first time in Charlian, and for the rest of you, a homecoming that is long overdue. You must have places you wish to visit and people you're dying to see. Therefore, I propose we postpone our agenda so that we all. We have sufficient time to recover from our journey and get our bearings in the city. Once you've settled in, we can reconvene at the Baldessian Annex. How does that sound? It is a fine suggestion. We may not be welcome in the Olivia Estate as such, but I should like to nose around the neighborhood all the same. I am equally untethered, as it were. There is no pl particular place my kin call home. I would not pass up the opportunity to reacquaint myself with the city. Likewise, a quick tour of our old haunts might even yield some useful gossip. The annex is west of the Aetherite Plaza, wasn't it? I shall join you there anon. Yes, we'll see you there. I, too, have places I wish to be, I would be remiss not to visit forthwith, by thy leave. What of you, Astinian? My services as a guide are yours for the asking. That won't be necessary. Though we reconvene, I prefer to wander as the wind takes me. But I could... Oh. Well, Raha, would you like to join us then? We have, you've been gone for quite a while, and this would be the perfect way to refresh the, those dusty old memories of yours. Oh, of, of course, if you will have me. Come, Edmagos. Charlie and awaits. I mean... Considering, in his mind, he's been gone for over a hundred years. So let's, let's look at the timeline. So, way back in Oberon were born, he locks himself at the Crystal Tower and goes into stasis. Uh, a the, the while later, I don't know how long it was until the Eighth Unborn Calamity and he was awoken by, by people entering by uh, the Ironworks getting into the Crystal Tower. And then he traveled to the first. But when he traveled to the first, he was like a hundred years, I believe. I want to say a hundred years to when he finally get summons us to the first. In that time... He, he, he traveled to the first with the Crystal Tower, 
established the Crystarian, got that all built. That's why it all looked all nice and shiny when we got there. We had a hundred years to to gather people, to build, get it built, and everything as a bastion of hope in light of the uh, uh, Sin Eaters battles. And now he's back. So what was probably be like a couple of years, I don't, I don't know the full timeline of, uh, I, I should probably even look at I don't know the full timeline, but while we have a lot of instantaneous travel in this game, it's not always instantaneous travel. These things, like, in reality, like, if this was a real world, things are a lot farther apart. <laughs> so what takes us only, like, 30 seconds, a minute to get to, doesn't take that long. <laughs> it takes a lot longer to get from place to place. So... Especially when we we took that sea voyage from Aorzia all the way to the Far East. Think about it this way. The process of that would be the equivalent of going from, like, Spain down around uh, Africa. Maybe a little less, probably because you probably don't have, like, the full region of Africa. Going all the way over to Japan. Higashi, uh, where Kugane is. That entire trip probably took weeks, if not like a month. In the Aetherite, no faster travel between the, the places. Once we tuned, but it's a long way. So time passes during all of that. A lot of time passes, so we've probably had a couple of years here. So, so Raha probably has at least a hundred or so years since last he was in Charlene. Yeah, I think um, location-wise, Charlene's probably the equivalent in, in the real world. If Aorzi is like Europe. And Charlian is like the British Isles uh, or on the British Isles. So it really doesn't take that long, but it takes a little bit of time. So in this case, probably took a day. We got in the ship. Uh, it actually looked like they were we were doing it like just at dusk or something. So we got on the seas and woke up to Charlian. Going from like Spain around to... Um, uh, England. I'm not sure if that's exactly the, how long it takes it would take to go on a ship from, from somewhere in Spain or Portugal, England. But I'm doing it all this way because that's how I'm seeing it on the map. If you, you got to do it in reverse, so I was. Anyways, you know what I mean. Not. Oh dear, his enthusiasm is infectious, isn't it? After you, my friend, I'm more than, than content to follow your lead. Right, he is now accompanying you. Keep him at your side in order to proceed with the quest objectives. You can leave leave Gratia behind by entering a different area using the Etherite, Ethernet, or by putting too much distance between you. You can also speak with Graha and select the option to part ways. If you wish for Graha Tia accompany you again, return and speak with him at the original location. While Graha Tia is accompanying you, next try speaking with Cryo. All set. Then let us be on our way. Our first stop, amusingly enough, will be the last stand. It's a cafe at the on the west side of the harbor. Kral is also now accompanying you. Lead your two companions to the next step, last stand, and speak with Kral at the designated location. 
While you are accompanying, you may encounter conversation points along the way, which offer additional topics of discussion. Entering the glowing area and speak with your quest companions to initiate these bonus conversations. Enjoy exploring your surroundings together. I don't know why I do like a 1920s voice. I just want to see. Is that too far? Nope. <laughs> I can, that's fine. I, I, I. <laughs> They're like... <laughs> They're probably like, there it goes, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Uh, the, by the way, I'm playing Reaper. New, new, new job for the expansion. Uh, might as well uh, uh, play it. So there's a giant statue in the harbor. Hold on. Let's stop so I can show it. See that? That's where the fountain we we saw with the big waterfall. Oh. Oh crap. When that happens, hopefully, I will be back. Back. I'm assuming this has to deal with some sort of lag. Now, that is a sight one could hardly forget the great statue of Thaliak. As a student of Baldassian, I was usually quartered on the Isle of Val, but I would gather, gaze upon the scholar's wise features every time I returned by ship to the city. What does Kryl have to say about it? This path leads toward the sea, is known as the Thaliac Stoa, and is so named for the statue of the scholar which stands at its end. As you know, the Charlian people prize the ac accumulation of wisdom above all else. Thus, when Thaliac was chosen as our patron deity, it was more of a matter of pragmatism than belief, in alignment of principles, as it were. We may have honoured him for a rather impressive scholar. We have honored him with a rather impressive sculpture, yes, but our faith is not so restrictive as that of the, the Ishgardians. Individual Charlians can, and do, worship the divinities of their choosing. Oh, there, sounds back. And yes, we can wander. Where had I actually gone over here? Let me show you. The waterfall coming from the uh, ewer. I wonder if there's any conversation points over here. I haven't been over here. Uh, nothing really of note. Might be a good fishing spot. Nice and quiet. Of course, I need to get fishing up to that level. That was the spot for the Thalia conversation. Here we are. Dr. Graha. Ah, the last stand. Now, now that is inviting a rumor. And here we are, the last stand. I may have mentioned this before, but although our research into nutrition and food preparation is quite extensive, the average Charlian tends to regard seasoning and flavor with a, with a certain indifference. How do I put this? The food is, um, it's bland. As encapsulated by our infamous Arkham bread. I mean, the prevailing sentiment towards cuisine, dietary value first, and taste, a distant second. There was one people at the studio, however, who could stomach the school's insipid meals no longer. So he quit his lessons and poured all his savings into building a proper eatery. And so the last time came to be. It is, as the name implies, the sole dedicated outpost of fine dining in Charlian, the one and only bastion of the culinary arts in an isle of otherwise mediocre fare. 
I seem to recall the burger being hailed as one of the most impressive items on the menu. Not that I ever had the pleasure of eating one myself. Because you are a typical Charlian when it comes to cheap and convenient, Raha. But surely Tataru has since taught you how to appreciate the well-prepared dish. We should all stop, a, stop in when time permits and sample the cafe's delights. And we press on. The stairs to the side of the cafe there will take us up to the Etherite Plaza. Actually, giving a proper look around. Hold on. We got a path up there. Oh, we're going to the eighth right. Stay tuned. Hmm. Got something. Grab the Ethernet shard. Okay. An unusual shape, isn't it? I show you how it is a perfectly functional etherite. Remember to attune yourself before you move on. Now, being the diligent tour guide that I am, I should make mention of the Confluence, a research facility located in the very plaza. Its much vaunted discoveries are the reason Charlian stands in the forefront of teleportation technology. In deciphering the underlying principles of elegant etherites, it allowed us to understand and reconstruct what is essentially a lost art. And off we go to our next destination. Our path leads northeast to the Agora, uh, Charlian's largest marketplace. So here's the market board. Summoning bell. Shops where we have Rectainer Vocate. Studio supplier, gemstone trader. To your mother, vendor, mender, tool supplier, we'll plate armoire, various battle gear, accessories. Oh, it looks like there's supposed to be a shop there. Hmm. Welcome to the Agora, where you'll find wares made in Charlian as well as a wide selection of imported goods. Yeah. They also used to sell questionable prototypes of various research institutes, but I think that practice thankfully died out for the most part. Otherwise, I would take home no better place to stock up for your next big adventure. Am I overselling it? Ahem. Mm -hmm. On its more serious note, the next stop on our tour is one that is particularly relevant to our ultimate purpose here. We must head back to the Aetherite Plaza, follow the path north, then climb the stairs up to the imposing building at the very top. Confluences. Yeah. So that's the confluence right there. Albert! That's an interesting name. Research must be. must needs to be conducted efficiently. I surround myself with the sweet scent of flowers to calm myself down. Helps me keep an open mind, you see. I like seeing rows that are marked. They're not big dumb brutes. Azumi? 
Hello there, Amicus. Surprised I know your name? Well, you shouldn't be. You're practically a living legend. This is the Nymphonium. Nymphonium, a monument built in tribute to water spirits known as the Nymphi. It seems rather fitting for the city that is erecting the towering statue of the, river, of the ruler of rivers, Thaliacno. These little decorative features are typical for shoddy in architecture, aside from the research wing. Our headquarters in the Isle of Val were rather simple and rustic by comparison. This is an Nymphonium. Nymphon... I have no idea how to pronounce that. An area dedicated to the blessings of water. For Charlene's water represents more than a life steam liquid. It is a reminder of the great flood which precipitated the birth of our nation, as well as a symbol of the knowledge which flows from Thaliath's divine year. This is the reason we see an abundance of fountains throughout the city and an propensity of utilizing water as a decorative feature in our architecture. Ah, that what an invigorating breeze. Touch biting, perhaps, but pleasant nonetheless. This grand structure before you is the Rostra. The name refers to the official public platform erected, the original public platform erected here, upon which a forum of elected representatives would deliver orations and debate policy. Though the stage has since evolved into a council chambers. Whereas the nature of the forum and the duties of its members remain largely unchanged. Am I boring you, Raha? You seem awfully distracted. My apologies. From here one can see the entire city spread up below. The vista put me in mind of my arrival in the first with were... those who had gathered those who gathered at the Crystal Tower to ask me how they might go about building a new home. Naturally, my answer is and we're all inspired by my knowledge of the finest settlement I could think of, the great city of Charlene. And bit by bit, those few buildings grew into town, the town, a community, a crystarium. I can, can almost see its echo. I see. Feel free to come up here whenever you wish. I don't think the councillors would object you to simply enjoying the view. Such mem memories should be treasured. For now, however, the tour must go on. Our spectacle of... The sightseeing concludes with the fitly named Journey's End. Walk down the stairs to the east and continue straight ahead. I can run. They'll run with me. Kids, you should have been running down the steps. This neighborhood is home to the highest echelons of Stalin society. I never did feel comfortable enough to wander these streets on a whim. We've arrived at Journey's End. History tells us that this was where those who put ashore with Archon and Nimkrumpf, Yunkrumpf, built their first homes. By the way, Yunkrumpf is a Regadin uh, uh, name. How do I know? Because it's very... Uh, Uh, Scandinavian, right? right? Not Scandinavia, right? Where we're like Sweden, Norway, that area is. Turkish journey. 
In the present day, it serves as the residential district for the most important officials and the oldest Charlian families. We'll see that one mansion is clearly larger than its neighbors, as they belong to our friends from House Levieux. You know, all things considered, we should probably keep our distance for the time being. With that, we bring a little Charlian tour to close. I hope it's proven to be an entertaining and enlightening experience. Now, shall we head directly to the Beldessian Annex? You remember the way, don't you, Raha? I like how she calls him Raha instead of Graha. It's a... Like, you probably have seen the few people who call Yishtola Yishtola. It's kind of like a friendlier version. Because the letter at the beginning is an um, indication of their tribe. Like in uh, when we were in Storeblood and we met the M tribe, which Monago was part of, sometimes referred to as Nago. And basically, all their names are M, apostrophe, and then whatever the rest of the name is. Uh, Tia is like a rank. Uh, uh, none, I think it's like so. If Graha was the next rank up or the leader of a tribe, would be a Graha Nun instead of Graha Tia. But the name say, anyways, little naming conventions of speakers. Anyways, let me think. We head down towards the harbor, cross the bridge to our right, and then follow the path below the Aetherite Plaza. Correct. After you, Amigos. One thing, uh, uh, one thing of note on this is they have a lot of times where they just give directions. <laughs> Instead of, like, being like, I'll meet you there, and then you just, like, wander. It, you, you look at the map and be like, oh, where do I need to go? And then it actually, they actually tell you how to get to where you're going to go. Right, we cross this bridge here, so recall, stick to the path and be careful not to end up uh, back in the Aetherite Plaza. Charlene is full of educational research institutions, but these are still professors who prefer to establish their own private practices. Not that I have attended the exclusive schools they run in their residences. Perhaps the twins could tell you more about them. Here we are. This is it, the Baldessian Annex. As the joyous look on Rahul's face is undoubtedly waiting for you, this is the Baldessian Annex. If you continue up the hill, you will arrive at the doorstep of Phenomenon. But I think we'll have explored enough for one day. Take take you there another time. Inside with you then. Go! Oh, I want to, to attune to the Ethernet shard. I'm back. And I brought Emigos and Raha with me. Ah, you're right about the ship then. Hello, Graha. It's nice to see you again. And it's a pleasure to meet you, Amagos. I've heard many a tale of your exploits. Ojika, Ojika Sugajika. 
It's been, a, been an age. Allow me to introduce Ochika Suchika, Administration Officer, the students at Baldusian. He oversees the day-to-day -day business at the Annex. You may recall meeting his cousin, Ichika. Ah, yes, Eureka. I have read the initial reports. Quite a shock to hear it was become the Isle. Do take care if you have the, the opportunity to rejoin the expedition. This place is like a second home with the students. The Isle of Val served as our main headquarters, of course. Of course, but we often had occasion to visit Charlian. Whether to make use of the city's research facilities, attend conferences, or procure supplies for distant, from distant shores. And the annex here was built to provide lodgings for our members while we were engaged in such activities. Ever since our former headquarters belong along with the isle itself, vanished, the annex has served as our base of operations. I have a strange feeling we might actually find out more about what happened to the Isle of Val. I'm not sure. I never actually did Eureka stuff, so. And yet, it feels so empty, with so many, many lost to us, our organization is a shell of the former self. The day will come when you will see the students rise again. But first, we must ensure that the Tlothroi fall. Through the door on the left is the, the main hall where we discuss our options moving forward. forward. Once everyone arrives, that is, we'll probably have time to rest before our discussions begin in earnest. I've had private quarters prepared for you in the Andron. And so please feel free to make yourself at home. Ah, the nap rooms. Perfect for an afternoon doze. Ah. Huh? Oh, I didn't mean to give you the wrong impression. The chambers are quite well appointed, far more than some cheap roadside roadside inn, you may be assured. It was simply that we were often so busy with research or exhausted from journeys abroad that we would slip into the Andron just for to steal a few winks. And thus we become known amongst the Charlians as nap rooms, even if many such naps might, might last well into the following morning. Say the word and I'll be happy to show you to the chamber. Hopefully the others won't be too long coming. I'll await you in the main hall. All right. Should have attuned to this before I actually finish that conversation, but we will continue. Do you have papers paste? You have papers pasted on the walls of your room. Twas not unusual for occupants to pin notes and documents and such, and then forget to take them when they went on their merry way. Sometimes it's quite deliberate, though. You might see complaints addressed by other members or a thank you card from the engrossing, the engrossing literature somebody left behind. Beloved traditions, but I should know better than to dwell upon. If you are to create a f future for the students of Baldessian and so many others, we must look to, to the days ahead. There's some desks or uh, and books and everything, but no like central table or anything. It's kind of a mess, but yeah. Feeling refreshed and learnt, my well, colleagues should be wandering in soon, so I suggest we stay and stay here and wait for them to join us. Pray forgive me. I was delayed. Hmm. It's fine, Marie Angers. We're all here now. Let 
Let's get down to business then, shall we? It's voice actor. I don't think I need to, to have the subtitles, but. Come what may, we must prevent the Telophoroi's plans from coming to fruition. At present, I see two paths for gathering the information which may aid us in achieving that goal. The first involves an investigation into the change which has come over Charlian. Not to mention the recent inscrutable behavior of the Forum. As most of you know, the 99 members of the Forum are elected from the general populace. This alone guarantees a plethora of opinion with regards to foreign policy. The Bibliotheques, for example, are a group of conservatives which would have Charlian focus on recording history while remaining entirely uninvolved in the making of it. And at the other extreme, we have advocates for proactive diplomacy and direct intervention. My grandfather, Galef, was one such member, as was Archon Luisois. Yet despite our diverse factions and philosophies, the recent vote to deny Eorzea's request for assistance was unanimous. Even more concerning was the fact that many cited other, more pressing duties as justification for their recalcitrance. Fortuno's refusal in Gridania had those same undertones. T'was as if, having stared unblinking into the face of impending doom, he had simply turned away to pursue something more important. But what could that possibly be? A mystery indeed. And one which I ask for your help to solve. Our future may depend on it. As for our second potential path, it concerns a request made directly to the students of Baldessian. Our organization was founded primarily to study strange and unexplained phenomena the world over. Mysterious relics and ruins, arcane disturbances, and so forth. Compared to our more isolationist Charlie and colleagues, we have strong connections overseas, namely with scholars and academics who share our passion for the unknown. The request in question comes from one such acquaintance, Nidana, an alchemist residing in distant Thavnair. Her missive describes the sudden appearance of a tower and the subsequent summoning of what I can only assume is a lunar primal. In response to this threat, the satrap of Rads at Han, the individual who governs the city-state, has instructed the alchemists to find a means to deal with the spire. The artisans of that land are heirs to an ancient tradition, one rather unlike that of their Uldan counterparts. It is possible, nay, probable, that they have gleaned truths unattainable by Eorzea or her Far Eastern allies. They do, in fact, appear to have a strategy in mind, though it will require further research. To that end, they have requested an introduction to a capable warrior shielded by the blessing of light. Assuming we divide our forces to pursue both of Kraal's lines of inquiry, then having you join the group heading to Thavnair would seem the obvious choice. But the investigation in Charlian is of vital importance as well. Equal, I think, to the Thavnarian one given that the fate of the world may hinge on the results of both. Yes, it is quite the quandary. Though it is a great imposition and an altogether too common one, our efforts would be more likely to succeed were you to lead the charge on both fronts. You are indeed our champion. As to which task to tackle first, we will defer to your decision. Let us next decide how everyone else might best be assigned. As for myself, I shall continue what I've begun in Charlian. 
I should also like to steal the services of an Archon or two. And thereby gain access to a greater range of reading material. I will help with that. Allow me to offer my assistance. I have some small amount of experience in the field of research. After spending a hundred years trying to figure out how to <laughs> summon me to the first. I'd also like to help, if you would have us. Anything to understand even a fraction of what our father and the forum might be thinking. Of course, the more the merrier. Right. The rest of us will make the journey to Thavnir. Thoughts? Objections? I passed through Thavnir on my way to infiltrate the Empire. And though I'm not qualified to give a guided tour, I did gain a sense of where things lie. I'll be happy to have you along then. So for this group, it will be you, me, and Uriaje. Give me a moment afterwards, and I'll supply you with all the details of Nadana's request. Consider this hall our rendezvous point once our respective tasks are complete. May our investigations prove fruitful. reason my backlight here and my keyboard went out. That's okay. <laughs> it's still really thing. So we've got Sav gear or stay here. I think I'm gonna gonna start with here. But I think because I'm in Charlian, I should probably not be dressed in a kind of a crazy looking thing. So I'm gonna switch to a different job. Actually why don't I go ahead and, and stick to uh my sage roots. So one thing I did find out while running through this on Elagos, my main character, is this split, if you split it from classes, it won't necessarily get you to a <laughs> or jobs. It won't necessarily get one of your your uh, jobs up to 81 in time for the first dungeon. So, I leveled all five of my main, main classes here to 81. So I can easily switch between the two during that time. Uh, in any case, during for the most part, I'll be doing stuff on Reaper. Uh, Reaper will be my main... I, I just am a melee person. I prefer melee combat in general. I do enjoy the others, but... Um, uh, in general, I'll probably do that. Uh, but thematically, I think I'll do Sage. It's a Charlian based I mean, it's a healer job. What are others? Oh, I got Panheimer too. Where I I need to put that in a better place. But uh, I actually need to use the restroom, so I'm going to be right back.
So hold that thought. Enjoy the music. All right. All right, so let's start here. I might get on this. It was perfect. Didn't I get another one? Unsettling changes come over Charlian, but together we will divine the underlying cause of the Fallen's calluses. As I mentioned before, however, questioning the Councilors directly is a fruitless endeavor. They seem to have already come to a consensus as to what and how, how little they will they are willing to divulge. Which is why I began scouring Charlian's archive for historical records for any hint of a connection to the final days. Suffice it to say that progress has been slow. There's only been so many dusty pages one can skim in a day, but now that I have this band of willing reinforcements, my search should proceed all the swifter. <clears throat> Let us reconvene outside Numenon, mm, shall we? Exit the annex to the right and you'll find the archives on the western edge of the woods. And I'm not using stage gear, or that the, I've glammed everything not to be the stage gear, mainly because, uh, it doesn't look good. I don't like it at all. I think the level 90, uh, job gear actually does look good. But the, uh... 70 and 80. 70, the stuff that you just get for getting the job. When you get the job and the 80 that you acquire. It, they actually are the same. <laughs> they look the same. They don't look good, in my opinion. Alright, so I tuned every all the Ethernet shards in Charlene. Here's a Nemedon. I 
directions were easy enough to follow, I hope. In that case, you stand now before the doors of Numenon, Valian's greatest collection of books and tomes. This building is actually only an entrance, and one of many of that, for the archives of Numenon extend deep below the surface like the roots of a tree. The vast halls of the Great Gubal Library pale in comparison to Numenon's endless maze of subterranean chambers. Any citizen of Shardian is free to enter and peruse its shelves. Well, most of its shelves. Only Archons are afforded access to certain restricted vaults. I dispatch Estrella and Raha to investigate those. Meanwhile, Alize and Alphino will help me, me continue my search through the stacks open to the general public. Your status presents more of a problem. As a non-citizen, you are only permitted to browse the first floor here at the entrance. Even so, there should be a number of books that would touch upon Charlian history or their foreign policy. Your task will be to find and study the relevant publications. I promise you, working knowledge of those subjects will make it easier to spot the sort of clues we're looking for. Let us be about it, shall we? I have told the others to meet us at the stone benches over there once we've found some promising tomes. Happy reading. Again, time passage. This probably takes a lot longer than it's going to take me because I'm going to just like wander around the room, click on anything that's clickable. Actually, let me, let me do some adjustments to my HUD here. It'll work. Swords of Wisdom. During the chaos of the Six Onward Calamity, Archon Jungkrumpf, founder of Charlene, bore witness to the madness and savagery of men throughout were brought to the brink of despair. Upon raising his settlement on an island in Northern Empty, he instructed his people thus renounce the ways of war and pursue enlightenment through knowledge and reason. The Shardians took to heart the words of their savior and thenceforth served as stewards of wisdom. Upon a foundation of accumulating learning, they built a homeland unlike any other, a nation born from str strength of minds rather than strength of arms. With knowledge and economics came shrewd, came shrewd trading. With knowledge of agriculture came boundless crops. Engineering brought wells and, wells and sewers ending squabbles over water. Wealth of expertise could be could be bartered for wealth in coin, and the more their wisdom spread throughout the world, the more mankind as a whole the more mankind as a whole whole would thrive. And so it was that no matter the trials and tribulations of the age, the citizens of Charlene would live by their founder's teaching. For the sake of the better tomorrow, for the sake of the better, brighter star, they would eschew the tools of war and with knowledge deliver the world. Forever 20 summers. My beloved seekers of knowledge, have you ever put learning before your health and neglected to feed and rest your body as you should? I, too, have engaged in such foolish practices, but one night, roasting philosophical study, had an epiphany. For all the world's mysteries that drive us to reckless abandon, we would have... I have so many, very few years of life in which to achieve our goals. Thus do I share with you this mantra, I'm forever 20 summers young. The number itself is unimportant. You could be 19 or 23 or 40, whatever age you are when you discover this manual. Let that be the age you aspire to remain. Through mindful, healthy, mindful, healthy living, through my mindful, healthy living, will you extend the time available to spend upon your chosen research? Another day, another moon, another summer to grasp the greater truths you pursue. In the pages that follow, you will explore the secrets of maintaining one's physical condition with, from a biological, etherological, and arcane viewpoint. Uh, nope, this has nothing to do with the form of the history of Charlene. Introduction to the heavens. 
Have you ever gazed at the skies above and contemplated the mysteries contained within? I speak not of shifting cloud patterns, but the vastness beyond of the sun and the twinkling tapestry of the night. Some think the dome above us to be a finite space, yet, amongst the leading thinkers of our age, one scholar's depiction of a boundless sea of stars, of stars has firmly root, taken root. Alas, this heavenly sea remains an unreachable, unknowable destination. There are few indeed who can explain in satisfactory detail why our own stars believe to resolve, revolve around the sun. It was the technologies of Alag who came closest to understanding the laws which govern the, that starry abyss. It was they who launched Dalamud and brought to expand beyond our earthly bound, ex bound existence. Having read this ancient ambitions, I wonder, as your interest, having read of their ancient ambitions, I wonder, have you interest in the field of study waxed or waned? What if I were to tell you that the eternal constellations are arranged differently in the distant past, that their positions continue to shift almost imperceptibly but measurably as we continue we journey into the future? Would it shock you to learn that the stars drift further and further apart and may indeed do so forever as you eager to learn more? Nope, uh, that's not the right subject. The voice of a growing city. In the, in the years which followed the founding of Shadian, civic policy and other matters of import were decided by the Ecclesia, a public forum in which every citizen was uh, eligible to speak. As the city's population grew, however, this format became increasingly impractical. The larger number of participants gave rise to an even larger debate, resulting in significant delays and vital resolutions. Various measures were introduced in an attempt to curtail protracted discussions, but in the year 201 of the Sixth Astral Era, it was ultimately decreed that Shalian would, would transition to a new form of government. The nation would now be led by a body of 99 members. This is cho chosen from amongst their peers by means of a nationwide vote. Thus was the vo form as we know it today conceived and created. So we know the history of how, why, how the forum was created. Roads of old, the colony. Eight years ago, on the banks of the Thaliac in the Trevanian hinterlands, a Charlian colony once thrived. This settlement was originally established um, as a mere outpost to study the ethereal sea in the year 1311 of the Sixth Astral Era. Uh, scholars dispatched to Eorzea, founding the facilities, found the facilities wanting, and their demands encouraged a gradual expansion in structures and services. As rumors spread of growing community of ac academics, the area was further inundated by Eorzean students hoping to share in the renowned wisdom of the Shalians. Fifty years later, the forum passed a motion to recognize what had become a flourishing town as an official Shalian colony. Eorzean residents took to calling the colony itself Shalian, which led to no small amount of fusion when discussions turned to the subject of the motherland. In response, some some Shalian inhabitants, if if pressed for a name, would simply refer to it as Emporium. Following the Great Exodus, however, goblins and treasure hunters claimed for themselves a corner of the abandoned colony and gave it yet another name, Idleshire. The following chapters go on to introduce the most prominent features of Idle Shatter. The book does not appear to contain any additional information in the forum or cover the history of Charlie and Melton Land in greater detail. The story of Charlie. This must be appropriate. Long, long ago, on an island in the northern sea, there lived a regated man by the name of Numkempf. Nkemf was a student of astrology and divined that a flood of terrifying proportions would soon sweep over the lands of Eorzea. So it was that he built a gigantic ship, assembled a crew, and set sail for the imperiled realm. The flood arrived as foretold, and to his horror, the strangely churning waters drove the people towards the ocean. It was there, however, that 
Nunkenth, his crew hauled them aboard, aboard his ark, but the danger had not passed. A towering wave approached, threatening to smash the vessel to pieces. With only moments to spare, Nunkenf wove a mighty spell of teleportation and shifted the entire ship to safety atop Abalathin's Abalathia's spine. The refugees from the surrounding regions huddled there alongside them, but it was not long before disputes over the dwindling supply of food led to violence and bloodshed. Saddened by the shift, Nunkampf gathered to, to him his crew and his grateful passengers and abandoned the Ark to those running peaks, returning to the coast where they built a new ship intent upon returning to the northern seas. It landed on the beach of an island and settled upon that very spot. That settlement prospered and grew, and in time it became the city of Shalian we live, live in to this day. In a fundamental understanding of Shalian history and the foundation of the Forum, head outside to the rendezvous point and await your companions. I think I did the wrong voice. I was supposed to do that in more of the 19, 1920s announcer voice, or the 40s, I don't remember. The news real in the news. I don't think this is voice acting. Oh, right, were you waiting long? That's not auto events. Wanted to make sure I borrowed at least a few promising tomes. Alphano and Kral should be along shortly. I was delayed in a similar fashion. As far as I could see, no titles in the Archon stacks mentioned the final days specifically, so we have no choice but to start from the intent well intangibly relevant tomes, if they are even that. At present, the plan is to skim through as quickly as we dare and share any discoveries we make of them. It would have been nice to invite everyone to the estate. Plenty of comfortable places to read and a ready supply of hot tea. Oh, I've always quite fond of reading outside. And it's not about the simple little pleasures, is it? You miss your home. It's been difficult. After our arrival, we managed to speak with one of the family servants and ask how things were. It seems our dear father has instructed the staff that even if Alphino and I were to return to Charlian, we are not to be allowed to cross threshold. Harsh measure, indeed. I hope that an effort to understand this position and that of the forum will perhaps lead to a reconciliation. We'll mend this rift one day, I'm certain of it. And what of you, Graha? Have you been to visit your family, or do they not live here in the city? Ah, oh, well, my situation is somewhat complicated. I was raised in Charlene, yes, but I was born rather further away. In the southern reaches of Ilsvard, in fact. For generations, my people have dwe dwelt in Corvos, the coastal region opposite the island of Thavnir. The Allegans founded a city in that fertile land, and by ship brought the subjugated tribes of the Makote to serve as laborers. Of course, the massive earthquakes of the fourth humble calamity brought an end to the Empire's reign, and when the fifth, uh, fifth calamity froze the seas solids, many of the tribes still living in Corvos braved the journey back to Eorzea. My ancestors, however, chose to remain, that they might might prevent the remnants of elegant technology from being misused. It's in Corvos, under Gallian rule. For the past 50 years, yes. Some semblance of local culture remains, as in the case of most imperial provinces. But Garamald renamed the, the region Locus Amenenus. Amenus. When I was a boy, a nearby town came under the jurisdiction of imperial, illustrious imperial family, the noble, nobles of House Darnus. House Darnus demonstrated similar interest in elegant civilization, so my tribe was forced to consider a plan of action. For some time already, voices have been raised in favor of abandoning our ancient customs after all. Galligan and I no longer pass to our eldest children as reliably as we once had. 
And fear of discovery eventually tipped the scales, and the decision was made to bury our ties to the knowledge, knowledge and traditions of Alec. As the last children, child born of the elegant eye, I was given over to the custody of friends and the students of Balthasian, who had me registered as a Charlian citizen. I never even considered. Look at me. with an unkind question. Even Thancred was taken in by Archon Louis uh, was he not? Stories of adopted waifs and rescue orphans are more common among Charlians than you might think. Yet, regardless of our origins, we are all provided with an equal opportunity to learn, and sufficient prosipacy, you, we outsiders, can even earn the vaunted title of Archon. This is exactly why I have much love of this country, and why I wish to remain a nation of which its citizens can be proud. Hear, yeah, hear! Yeah. Another good reason to get to the bottom of the form's stubbornness, aside from the trifling matter of our impending doom. Excuse us while we try to make some headway into these books, Emigos. More companies should be arriving at any moment now. We have returned with our selections. Although I must say the pickings are quite slim indeed, Mr. Krell has already f through every history book devoted to disasters and more, and more than a few of which barely may, made mention of them. As such, we have been looking f into research papers on the Umbral Calamities as well as articles written by prominent form me members. Perhaps their knowledge of the final stays comes from an unexpected source. Speaking of which, might I ask you a few questions related to the final days? I'm the only one here who didn't witness the events of Amarat firsthand, and in fear I may be overlooking critical details. I thanks. Now, where to begin? First things first, what kind of phenomenon did the answer? Ancients encounter in the final days drew nigh. Elite destabilization of creation magics. Yes, the un unfolding catastrophe wrought havoc on all manner of life. The chaos extended to the, the ancients themselves, causing their powers of creation to spiral of control. Fear and despair manifested in terrible, tangible fashion. And meteors falling from the sky, fires erupting from the ground, indescribable abominations prowling the streets. That more or less aligns with my understanding. If only the art of creation was survived until the present day, we might have some uh, something substantial to analyze. To the best of our knowledge, however, those techniques are not preserved or passed on. It still does surmise that the closest known magic is the summoning rituals prom promulgated by the Beasians. Was there not aught else of note that heralded the approach of the final days? They say it began with the Keening Zone. Ah, yes, the Armatrines spoke of it, didn't they? They never did uh, did hear the sound ourselves, of course, for us as we were into the midst of the madness. But it seems that each and every one of the catastrophes were preceded by this ominous noise. It eventually resounded all across the star, not even Amara was bad. So the ground was crying out, you say. We considered the harbinger of doom, it would have been quite distinctive and... Probably quite loud. I'll have to speak with one of Numenon's mammoths and ask after books that make mention such sound. Last but not least, would you describe how the ancients sought to quell this unprecedented calamity? Which, What distinctive action did they take? Summon Zodiac.
Yes, with the Lydibus serving as its heart, so many gave themselves in sacrifice to bring him into being. We do not know exactly how Zodiac brought salvation to the star, only that his godlike will well, were the laws of nature instead of right. Then, once the bounce were redressed, the ancients offered up a further sacrifice to heal the ravages of the final days. Lives sprouted new, and there was this fledgling souls that intended to render onto the Zodiac, a trade that would be allowed to resurrect the shades of loved ones absorbed by the primal. Or might have, had Venon and her followers not, not manifested their opposition in the form of Heidelin. Thank you, both of you. For the detailed review, I feel more confident now in our understanding the events. With all that freshly in mind, it does make me wonder what the Telophori truly mean when they speak of bringing back the final days. We've seen what they're doing with those towers of theirs, enforcing people to summon primals, a kind of catalyst? Are they attempting to mirror the conditions caused by unstable creation magics? Or are they simply using the final days as a figure of speech, a convenient metaphor for the scale of destruction they plan to unleash? <sighs> but this is all but pointless conjecture at this stage. Let us return our attention to the forum, shall we? We should keep an eye out for you, Stola. It's the time, time we began studying these research papers. I am the last, am I? Well, my extended search of the Archon stacks produced one or two possible useful books, but I wouldn't get our, your hopes up. If you recall, Oyeanje learned of the source of reflection from the Jirun Oracles, or oh, its potential to cause panic and confusion. And with that to a tome was deemed apocrypha and sealed away in the Great Gruba Library. It is even less likely that knowledge of the unsundered world, not to mention the horrors of the final days, would be left sitting on the shelf of any curious scholar to find. It stands to reason that my colleagues, be they archons or counselors, should perforce be largely ignorant of the subject. Yet when we confront Master Fortuner with knowledge of the Telophory and their machinations, he scoffed at the suggestion that they pose a threat. He seemed adamant that the Forum would know if the final days were truly upon us, which only supported the conclusions that whatever privileged wisdom is guiding the Forum's behavior is being kept secret from the rest of the nation. Not that I mean to excuse myself from reading duty. Whether they contain mention of the final days or no, these books could yet hold something of value. You aren't thinking of leaving, were you? There's plenty of work for everyone. Hey!
You labor for what feels like an age as you stole this research assistant. Oh dear, you look exhausted. What about your studies? Were you able to find any books on the subject you mentioned? Then the day is well spent. Should we wish to read them again? A mammoth of the reference desk will point you in the right direction. For the moment, though, I suggest you take a well-deserved rest. We might be occupied with our research for quite a while. I went into my inventory. <sighs> Actually, you can do this. There you go. Ready for a tea break, am I ghost? I know I am. Honestly, my neck and shoulders are about to calcify if I don't stretch my legs and walk around for a bit. You know the last stand down in the harbor, don't you? Come and meet me at near the outside tables and I'll treat you to the coffee. Quite good. Right there, uh, Alize. Uh, let me make a. There's a. Uh, minute of cleaner here. To my eyes, to see me. How you, Emma goes, Winroar? Ah, as I live and breathe, it is you. Ah! I knew it was the first to track you down. Who's the Gilship Fox Hunter now, eh? Wait, you have heard of the Gilship Hunts, right? Yes? They're not so diff different from the hunts you're familiar with in yours, yes, I understand. I'll wager they rather, rather more challenging. But an inventor of your caliber should never turn down a challenge, would you? Then no, 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 you wouldn't. Try to speak with North, the North Ota at the Peristyle to register your interest to get the earliest convenience.
Ah, I'm not a thirter. Uh, Would you like to place a bounty on the non rubies? No, I came for that uh, to be a hunter. By the scholar, uh, Emigos. I have half covid sites at the others an impossible task asking them to find you. The Gleaner Skill Trip has been posting hunt bills, you see, in the hopes that capable individuals take up arms to lighten our ever increasing load. Unfortunately, capable individuals remain the sticking point. With few hailing from our fair po polis are willing to take up arms, let alone able to stand against the most fearsome specimens. You, however, have the experience and the crit that we need. When I heard that you had arrived on our shores, it was music to my ears. You need to work for free, of course. You've done our research, and the rewards you offer are as fine as any you'll find abroad. The currency we employ is a relic of times when Glingner was a great deal less figurative. So you may find it somewhat eccentric, but it's it's just as good as guilt here. Speaking of eccentric, be noted that a majority of our clients are scholars. You probably wouldn't have half of the heard of half the creatures they send after, but I find it's best not to worry about that over much. Slay bees, collect samples, try not to think about the long-term effects of touching touching said samples, and get paid. Simple, no? That being said, I wouldn't dream of throwing you into the deep end just yet. I'll have you start off with some junior marks so that you can get your feet wet. Unlock the hunt board. Let's get the the key. Like. Oh, that also reminds me. I need We got Caribou, a Kachapucha and Thavnir, the Luncheon Toad, Thavnir, Gone oh, Wild. Wow. I say I see any of those. I'll complete those. Good to just have it on hand. Just in case. As busy as ever, I see. How many Charlians know other gourmet cafe has brought up to beat with customers? Actually, this crowd gives me an idea. Perhaps before we place an order, why don't we ask a few questions and gauge the mood of the city? I'm interested to hear about the average citizens have to say about the Telophory. We might even learn something new. Worth a try, don't you think? What? What is it? Can a man not enjoy a moment of a private respite? If you're looking to share a table, we respectfully request that you look elsewhere. Misunderstand, sir. We are simply wondering if you knew of the Tolophory. The enemies of peace have promised an end to all we hold dear, and... Wait. You're that House Livia girl. Livia girl, aren't you? And this man with you is obviously a foreigner. Humph! <laughs> Heard you were disowned by... Or helping outsiders indulge in their barbaric whims, and here you are giving truth to the rumor. I'll thank you to leave me be, not to say to the likes of you. Well, I must apologize to its foolish me to expect an ounce, ounce of civility from one so enlightened. Come here, my ghost. Yes, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Pay excuse the interruption, but we were hoping you could share your thoughts on the Telophory and their unconscionable plans. My goodness, if it isn't the young Miss Levier, I apologize, but I work in the offices of the forum before Rich Master Force knows that I've been helping you. I see. I'm sorry to have bothered you. Welcome, sir. What can I offer you today? Wait, is that Mistress Elise I see there? My word, how long has it been? Far too long. Meet Dixon, the owner of The Last Stand. I used to frequent this cafe on occasion. 
in between lessons at the studio. Seems like an age ago now. I remember hearing that, that you and Master Alphano were set sail to Eorzea and then you never came back. Lately, there has been gossip from your father disowning the pair of you. Everything all right at home? It's complicated, and I haven't expected complete strangers to be so familiar with our situation quite so quickly. Everyone has an opinion, it seems. Well, it is Hash Levier. No matter how how discreet Master Forstil well, may have been, news of your family's doings never ex stay secret for long. Things being what they are, you know what brings you back to the city now, of all times? You have questions, and only Charlian has the answers. Tell me, Master Dixon, have you heard anything about an apocalypse called the Final Days? What? Well, like the end of the world? Nothing like that, I'm afraid. That's what I've... Are you here to find information about this apocalypse? Yes, whatever we can learn. Unfortunately, our patrons appeared to, your patrons appear to be unwilling to speak with me. I wish there was more I could do to help. Hmm, well, maybe there is. You're visitors, Charlotte, aren't you? If you will know your face, you should be able to pass you off as a server and none the wiser. Just finish preparing a few hours, strike up some friendly conversation while you're saving down the food, and you might just get the answers you're looking for. Not a bad idea. Hate to ask. What do you think? Turn on me. That's the spirit. Pay attention now. I'll explain where each of these dishes needs to go. The tea set is for the chatty group sitting in the water by the water's edge. The omelette is one that is for one of our regulars, the Highlander by the name of Gisla. Gisla. She's sitting on an outside table in front of, front of us. Behind them you'll see a Makoti gentleman. He ordered the oven-baked lobster. Got it? Got all that. If you're not sure, just ask and I'll explain again. Good luck. Fortunately, they, they made this even easier without having to ask again, because it's really, they don't have like all three of them all like selected. It tells you to go to this specific table. Then the options are top to bottom. This is a tea set. The next one's an omelet and the last one's an oven baked lobster. Nice and easy. Oh, my tea set. Lovely, thank you. The Tlafa Who? I'm sorry, I've never heard of them all the final days. My friends and I are somewhat uninformed when it comes to current events. Now, if you want to hear about the ritual arcane pra practices of the sixth astral era, common or eccentric, then I'll be happy to talk your ear off. Omelette. Ah, finally. Two, four, six, eight. Let's dig in. No time to waste. What? The Telophoroi? Oh, yes. I remember hearing the name of the latest gazette. That or some grand claim about the end of days. Some old senseless warmongering. When all these folk fools look so tired of spilling each other's blood. Best stay out of it, I say. The farm makes the right choice, and I fully support our decision to remain neutral. Alas, the oven baked lobster is mine. We had no idea how long I was skipped and saved and suffered to afford this heavenly dish. Final days, that's the first I heard of it, though it would explain why my friend has been rushed off his feet. Be a busy time to be a gleaner. Hmm? You don't know what a gleaner is? Well, they're collectors of sort. Travel the world, procuring things that we haven't got here in Charlie and priceless books, unusual live specimens, and so forth. No name for the, those folks who trail up after the reapers in the field, picking up every grain which was missed. Aye, by all accounts, gleaning is the most meticulous and demanding profession. If those Tlofroi might 
make good on their audacious threats, then many uncatalogued rarities could be lost forever. Why else would the Glinius be buzzing about in such a frenzy? Watch the harbor and you'll see what I mean. That cotton loads in, in from the docks all day. Never seen this hectic before? Not all like this. Any trouble with the customers? Were you able to do one talking? Cleaners have been busy. Interesting. They seem unaware of the final days, aside from whatever vague news the gazettes are printing. Even Dixon has nothing to offer, and he's the best source of gossip in the city. Hmm. If the forum does have secret knowledge, then they've done an impressive job in showing no one whispers it in the wrong ear. And in case, thank you for playing the part so well. Here, that cup of coffee, I promised. Let's enjoy our drink somewhere else. Shall we? Maybe I'm behind the peristyle. Away from the gossips and their wagging tongues. Yes, this should do nicely. Out of the wind and out of sight. When our father disowned us, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It wasn't until much later that his words began to sink in, that I began to feel the weight of what it meant. Do you remember when the decision was made to come to Charlian? Grahal said that the Forum was determined to keep us in the dark, and that Father's venomous performance was part of that strategy, to keep us at arm's length. Perhaps it was. Father argued with Grandfather on many occasions, but never with such dismissive contempt. And when he demanded what justifies the sacrifices we make in war, I honestly didn't know what to say. Neither did Alpha know, I know, but never for one moment did I believe we had made the wrong choice. So all I could do was fume silently. It was only afterwards that I realized how childish I had been. How being stubborn and self-righteous must run in the family. If I could have just mustered a civil response, then things might have turned out differently. They must be ferrying goods to Labyrinthos. A vast complex beneath the island. Charlian is famous for archiving knowledge from around the world. Well, that knowledge is not preserved exclusively in dusty tomes and desiccated samples. Our living library, comprised of all manner of flora and fauna, is housed and studied within that underground facility. Still, that did seem to be an unusually large shipment. When I lived here, it was rare to even see such cargo transported by boat. Wait, didn't you hear something in the last stand about the gleaners coming and going more than usual? Well, I think they're the ones we saw manning those boats. And Gleaners answer to the Forum. 
If the appearance of the Telophoroi prompted this sudden burst of activity, then Labyrinthos may hold a clue as to what the Forum is planning. There you go. To our first zone. We should tell the others where we learned about the Gminas. Go on ahead to Numenon and I'll join you in a moment. Master Dixon will want his cups back. And yes, I did have a cup. I never had it in my hand. It was just sitting next to me. Easier to animate, I suppose. Look at my back in my ghost from a walk the blur. Well, exactly. We did some impromptu investigation. Alien turned up information on the gleaners. Exposition. Makes sense. The Gleaners take their requests directly from institutions and bureaucrats, but as you say, they ultimately answer to the Forum. A sudden and significant increase in Gleaner traffic in cargo. This certainly gives the impression of an overarching plan being set into motion. Let us see that. Let us see what theory we can build from the facts. As she still observed earlier, Numenon's archives appeared to contain no information concerning the final days. Compiled with the, what Emigos and Alize learned at the last end, we can be reasonably sure that most Charlians know nothing about this particular period of ancient history. Yet my father and his colleagues are not only unfamiliar with the final days, but are also somewhat concerned about the destruction I'm certain that the destruction being perpetuated by the Telephoroi are wholly unlike those apocalyptic events. Moreover, the Forum claims to be so occupied by a duty of such pressing importance that they saw fit to unanimously deny Eorzea's request for aid. And now the Gleaners, official agents of the state, have been mobilized on an unprecedented scale. I do not think it is a stretch to conclude that the Gleaners' recent activities are in service to the Forum's secret events. In which case, our next course of action seems obvious. We visit Labyrinthos and assess the situation for ourselves. We're lucky the Gleaners will be far more receptive to our questions. Maybe better than burying my head in a dusty book. I understand not some everyone is a studious type. Consider this a welcome change of pace, then. As for myself, there are a few more subjects I would like to research. I may join you later, but feel free to leave behind your borrowed books and be on your way. I'll see to it that each are returned in a proper place. That would be a great help. Thank you, Raha. Let's head down the stairs over there, and I'll show you where the entrance is. Hmm. 
Ready? Memorantos is not f too far from here, but we might f we may find the path a bit disorienting. I'll take the lead, so stay close. This is an escort quest. A sucky one at that. <laughs> it's pleasant here among the trees. We really should move along, but we really should move along. Even my walking pace is faster than her walking pace. Now we run. Try to keep up. Keep to the path straight ahead. And cross this bridge. Up here. Where do you stop? I would follow. <laughs> Russia, not far now. Here we are, through the store and down the stairs. You did remember to turn to the shop back there, didn't you? It would make your life much easier if you need to come back in a hurry. Otherwise, we should keep moving. Keep. You know, I rarely ever use these, but you never know when I need one. We're all here, yes. I've taken the liberty of procuring permission for the group's ascent. Right, everyone on to the lift and down we go. I can't remember if this is voice acted or not. Oh, it is. Deep beneath the scholar's city shines a false sun within a fabricated sky. Although it's showing night right now. In any age exist those who consider the floor an extension of their bookshelves. And this false architect surely belongs to that special breed. If the stack grows too high, start a new one. If no room remains, then make more rooms. A simple solution at first, and then bit by bit, a profound transformation. Knowledge buried beneath knowledge, a growing, creeping labyrinth from which there is no escape. Expected. I must admit, the artifice is very convincing. <laughs> but I assure you that we are beneath Charlian itself. The breeze you feel, the flowing waters you hear, all created by the hand of man. The island is volcanic, you see. 
And once upon a time, this great hollow must have been a reservoir for magma. It was discovered some 400 years ago, at which point it was repurposed as a storage facility for scrolls and samples and such. Renovations have continued, with nigh or no interruption to this day, with the lower levels still undergoing expansion. Aren't those people gleaners? Aye, judging by their dress. They are said to work alone as a rule, but would seem that rule is being enthusiastically broken today. It may be as you suspected, that they are engaged in a task apart from the norm. Let's spread out and get some answers then. Did you call to me just now? Oh, how odd. I must be a bit dizzy from the descent. I I'll be fine, I'm sure. Let's get to work, shall we? And with that, we're going to take a brief break and just because I like to cut videos in part. In about a half an hour, uh, two and a half hours. I would like to have that five hour long video. So I'm going to bring the stream down, but I'll be right back in just a couple of minutes. We're going to brief. Be in a couple of minutes for part two of the Endwalker Lore Labyrinthos. <laughs> 